Hello and welcome back to Groomer Chat with me, Tanya, and this evening we are joined by one of the stars of Pooch Perfect and a speaker at the English Groomers Challenge on the 5th of June. If you haven't guessed already, it's our Cocker Spaniel extraordinaire, Hannah Bowles. Hello! Hi! <laughs> and you've got your drink all ready. What are you drinking tonight? drink so i thought seeing as it we was having this special meeting i'd have a cheeky prosecco nice <laughs> can't go wrong with a few bubbles well this is it cheers in your plastic glass it's got to be done it's got to be done what are you drinking tonight gin and tonic <laughs> my staple go-to mother's ruin they call it don't they and they're not wrong <laughs> but it's really low in calories i've heard that i've heard that i like the uh, different kind of gins though you get all these like fruity ones like blueberry and stuff oh yeah they're what i have yeah 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 i've got a, i've got a, a floral one tonight which not that keen on hence the lemon added to it with the lemon it's lush <laughs> you get a slimline tonic and the gin oh, and yeah it's one of the lowest know, calories don't think I'm a tonic fan. I think I'm a lemonade fan. Oh no, it's too sweet. No, oh, that's me though. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> sweet enough. Oh, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, right. Let's start with what I know everyone's going to want to know. What was Pooch Perfect like? So like looking back now, I had the time of my life and had so much fun, but then I cried, I panicked, I swear, I had a breakdown and didn't know what I was doing, if I could groom, if I couldn't groom, anything like that. <laughs> but looking back, it was it was great. It was like such an experience. But yeah, at the time I was literally like pulling my hair out. <laughs> it's stressful going through it, but in hindsight, you're glad you did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was going to say it was just I think it was like everything mixed in, like getting thrown in, not knowing like all these questions and like tools that I didn't even know, like because I had to use all their tools. And at once when I had the Malamu, they were like, all right, bath this dog. I turned on the shower and it was like dripping. And I was like, are you joking? I've got a bath this Where's dog. Where's the with water that. pressure? Yeah. I was like, is this the challenge, guys? I was like, and my dog was filthy. I was like, they were like, you can have one shampoo bottle. I was like, I need like seven. I was like, <laughs> so, uh, um, I, I think you had the hardest week with that Malamute. Oh, no, I loved it. That's my kind of thing. Oh, oh no, I loved no. it. For me, of all the weeks, mm -hmm. I've taken on every challenge except that one. That oh, yeah, my, my, my boy was so old and so sweet, bless him. I think the others had more of a hard work. Like, apart from Tommy, he had, the show, he had the show dog, so he was all good. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't really an easy, even mix of, of dogs, was it? It really was a bit of pot like what you got and what you could do yeah. with them. It was it was very weird. Even with like the hand strip Welsh, some of them were like not hand strips or part strip and it was like yeah it wasn't it wasn't like everyone had the same it was like and one that was makes like, a big difference it definitely that, and that's it and there's like yeah it does make a big difference and that's why everyone was getting a bit like stressed as well because it wasn't like the same really but I know how hard it is to get these jog dogs during like a lockdown process yeah. knowing what they're like and yeah so yeah, getting yeah. enough of the same or similar breeds to, to fit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dur during the time when no one can travel and all the rest of it, it was hard going. It Yeah, it was. And that's what I was like at the time, like when I went, because we filmed in Manchester, I went in August, but the week before, Manchester was locked down. So it was a bit like, yeah. are we going? Are we not going? What are we doing? How are we getting there? And it was literally like, then we were like thrown into like the um, like the studio, the recording studio as well, and it was that was just another whirlwind experience. And it, was it just is like, hard, it, isn't it, when you've got cameras yeah. watching you? And the same question over and over again, and it you couldn't go anywhere by yourself either. Like you always had someone with you. So even if you wanted like a bit of a breathe or ten minutes, there there was not. There was always someone there. It was just like yeah. 
it was overwhelming as well and I I've got a few like pictures of me like sitting on the train like thinking what am I doing I'm crying and stuff but you know <laughs> I got there and I just got on with it <laughs> and you did well yeah yeah well you know not so too what bad is, what did your clients think when you when they saw you Oh, yeah, they've all gone mad. Even now, they still all talk about it as well. And they're like, oh, you did so well. And I'm like, oh, thanks, you know. Oh, you'll be dying yeah. off of that for years. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have got a nice picture of me blown up, put on the wall, you know. Of course. <laughs> and you pooch perfect open. Did you get to keep that open? Yeah, we did, yeah. So that's all nicely framed as well. Now. Oh, you don't so, wear yeah. it. No, no, it's um, it's oh, not that great for grooming. To be fair, <laughs> everything sticks to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got that, and then some nice pictures that I've put all in a frame as well. So yeah, but um, no, the customers are really happy, and I get I get so many inquiries. But everyone thinks I could do their dog like tomorrow or next week, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. no, I can't. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, you've got to book in advance. Yeah. And then we all get that, don't we? Yeah, def yeah, this is it. I, th I think it, obviously when everyone got dogs during lockdown as well, it went mad as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of lockdown puppies right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And they this all seem it. to be cockapoos. Yeah. Weirdly. <laughs> we're like, whenever someone phones up, we're like, what breed is it? And they're like, cockapoo. We're like, mm. brilliant. But I, uh, I don't mind. I don't mind them, to be fair. I really, I really like don't. cockapoos. Yeah. But it is like oh, another one. Can we not have something yeah. different? I know. I think the other day we counted. So in the salon, we had six cockers and seven cockapoos yeah. in like one day. And the girls were like, if I see another cocker or cockapoo. <laughs> Get a bit so. bored of the same trim and the same yeah. length. <laughs> At least oh, it's another four home attachment again. Whoop de doo. Yeah, yeah, this is it. I think I did like, yeah, the same, but I was just like oh. Don't even have to think about it, but at least it's easier. At least like the day goes, and then yeah. So, but, but then you do loads of cockers anyway, don't you? Yeah, literally. There's not, a day that, there's not a day that go by that there's not a cocker in in the salon. Which is why, of course, we've got you coming to the English Beamers <laughs> Challenge to do the seminar on cocker spaniels. And you bringing your boy with you? Uh, I don't know who I'm gonna bring yet. I don't know if it's gonna be Louis or one of the other ones I borrow from the lady that I borrow. She's got eleven of them, so I usually go to her. What one do you want me to take? And she'll usually find one for me. Oh, but um, doing. yeah, if not, then uh, Louis is always last resort. I was like, "Come on, an old boy, let's go for a day out." <laughs> he's getting on a bit now, isn't he, Louis? Yeah. So, so I've got two um, black and tan. So Lola. Um, she's 13 now so it's just uh, uh, no she's 12 and um, you know she's good but it's you know, I, I, and she would stand and she does and she does love it but I do think you've had enough girl now haven't you time to retire <laughs> yeah and Louis uh, Louis is nine um, and I, he's not hand stripped anymore his coat just wasn't as good as it used to be so mm -hmm. he gets like a comb attachment um, it still looks nice though and but I've been training one of my trainees to do him so she's kind of taking him over for a bit but there comes a, but he's not that good on the table he's a bit of a div <laughs> he's a boy. he stands he hangs his heads and he sticks his foot on so um he's not as good so yeah usually I go to my lady with all the cockers I'm like which which one do you want me to groom <laughs> yeah sounds like a plan yeah, this is it. So and of course there's a there's a theme, isn't there, of heads and toes or heads and feet or whatever is it called. I've really need see so yeah, I've written these things down so many times that I've got myself all <laughs> fuddled and by the time I get to talking about them, I can never remember what you've called it. It's he it's heads and feet, isn't it? Yeah, heads heads yeah. and toes, yeah. Heads and yeah, toes, yeah. Yeah. That's it. yeah. And I all in my head I've got top and bottom. And then yeah, that's yeah, fine. that's it. <laughs> so what is it you're gonna be talking about with with the cocker heads and the cocker feet well I suppose I will I probably actually won't bring Louis because he's not hand stripped so I think it would be nice to show everyone how to hand strip a cocker head because I always get people go oh it's not ready to come out and I'm like I usually find the like the wig is the first thing to come out I, and I really enjoy that when I start I feel like I could get my rhythm by like starting with the cocker head I think he's actually just joined me Louis. Hello, Louis. <laughs> You're gonna come say hello. Look, Long time no see, buddy. Uh, yeah. 
I, I did say this is why I got a plastic cup because I've always got a dog or a child. <laughs> So yeah, so when I start like hand stripping, I always start on the head because that's like my favourite bit to do, and I that usually could get a river that's sorted as well. So, but I know a lot of people struggle with stripping the wig as well, and like what to quite do with tough, like, isn't it? Yeah, it is. For the first couple of times, it is quite tough until they get used to it, and then it's yeah. quite yeah, because yeah, so. it's quite a daunting area to start that that yeah. pulling of it because it does feel tougher. Than, yeah, say, further down the back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Easy. Yeah. So it does always feel a little bit wrong. So it, yeah, it's good to 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 be able to demonstrate. Okay, this is what actually it should feel like. And what about the feet with a hand strip cocker? Um. So obviously, oh, Louis. <laughs> he always has to get <laughs> Louis. Involved. What are you doing? He always has to money. get. Always has to get involved. Don't you find that though, when you're having a conversation with somebody on FaceTime or Zoom or whatever, they're there. Oh, always. If I FaceTime my mum, he's there, he's like, nanny! And I'm like, she's really not interested in you. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Uh, But uh, if she says his name, he's like, it's my name. Oh, my my mum does that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She hears my mum or dad's dog in the background, she's like... I love it. I love that. The head two on a dog is just brilliant. He's so he's such a dip. He's rolling around like anything at the moment. I could just see him like rolling. Oh, so he's, he's had a cuddle and a fuss now. So he's just... <laughs> yeah. Feet. Um, sorry. Yeah. Feet. <laughs> so um, as well on a hand strip as well because I like to leave like the front leg a bit fuller as well. But then it depends on the dog as well. So if they haven't got well bone, like I, I like to leave a bit on there so it le- looks like the front legs were like, well boned. That's how it should be. So I still go for a cat like foot, and I know a lot of people do struggle with a nice, neat, tight cat like foot as well. So that's what I was just going to show how to do that and how I achieve that. Excellent. Yeah. So that's really, really good, handy things for people to know. Yeah. There's everything else in between. It's very much down to individual taste and lifestyle and everything else. But your head and your feet pretty much is standard. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I was going to say, it would be because um, they are the main questions that I get. Of, like, and some people go, oh, I didn't realise I took a cock a foot that tight. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it is like that is how it should be. No, they shouldn't have great big like ugg boots on. No. That's why I call it all Grinch feet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. When they first come yeah. into the salon and they've got all the big tufty bits coming. Oh, I know. Oh, get them off. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, but they're my like favourite bits to do as well. So yeah, I can hopefully explain quite a bit as well. So how's your handout coming? Because of course every every uh, delegate well, gets a handout. Well, I. I sent it all over to Julie because I wanted to make sure I went. I know. I I felt really like, because this is like the first time I've done something like this. So I was like, is this okay? Does this sound all right? So I sent a loads of before and afters and um, and then I wrote out. um, I mean, when you said like a page or two sides, I think I wrote like four pages. And I was like, am I just rambling on? Is this like... It uh, is yeah. hard to know, isn't it, on, on a hand, what to put in, what to leave out, With, to leave space yeah. for people to make their own notes and, and stuff like that. So I think, I mean, I wrote it all up and I've sent it over to her and I just said, look, is this OK? Do you want me to add anything? You know, like, do I need to explain anything a bit better? Because as well, the way I was writing it, I was like, does this sound all right? I was like, am I like writing it out like well enough as well? So, um, yeah, I sent it all over anyway, so I hope, hopefully I did okay. Julie, Julie will sort it for you. She's good. I know. Right? I was. I didn't mean to sound like a bit divvy, but I was like, I hope it's okay. <laughs> so we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, of course, you're touring at the moment as well, aren't you? So, yes. Yeah, so me, Abby, uh, Abby Too Good and Carl Boyd, um have all teamed up with Colin as well and we're just um so we went to Mutney's to do a seminar at Mutney's as well and now we've got one in Cambridge in a couple weekends time and we've just booked one down in Somerset down down in Somerset Ross don't know somewhere (laughs) Cambridge Somerset very much down yeah yeah (laughs) so yeah we just did done that um so yeah 
it's going all right as well. So nice. again, it's another learning. Tickets. Yeah, well, it's another learning thing as well of what we do because obviously we had to like we had to like so Carl was talking about business and because she runs a very busy like salon as well when um she just run uh won um was it national business young business person or something like that she won um and then obviously Abby's been doing like amazing with her cockapoos and poodles like wool type coats as well so we all do something a bit different as well. So it was all just coming together. But yeah, it was, uh, I think our Cambridge one sold out so quickly. Our Mutney's one was a little bit hit and miss, but I don't know if that was like time of year or because it was just after crafts as well. So I don't yeah. know. But I mean, obviously we still had people come, which was great as well. And I did find that Mutney's, like the showroom was a bit in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So, but you know. A lot of people did travel to there as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so again, we got amazing, like, food sorted, and it was nice the Mutneys gave us goodie bags, so it was all sorted. Yeah. So. Then you got Cambridge and Somerset. Any others coming up? Um, oh, I was hoping to do one near me, Essex. So, and then we was hoping to go, like, kind of middle, up north kind of way. Colin really wants us to go to Scotland. But that's like, I said to her, we need a whole weekend for that. We need like camping and everything. <laughs> that's a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Jeffy, we want to go up. But then again, I said to him, though, if we do that, we need, like, I can't really take customer, like my friend's dogs, all the way to Scotland for like the weekend. I was like, would someone be able to provide like the dogs as well? Because mm -hmm. I don't mind if it's like quite local, but Scotland's not. A two or three hour drive is no. it? that's the thing i mean i could always i mean i could always take this one but you know <laughs> he'd love it oh he, he, loves attention. he loves everything bless him looking there dogs are <laughs> doofuses that's just all there is to it oh that is, that should actually be his name that should actually be his name yeah yeah, I think we should change it officially tonight. It's no longer Louis, it's now Doofus. Yeah. <laughs> he does get called Div all the time. I was like, by the... Uh, but he's, he's such a happy dog as well. That's the thing. He's so happy. It's just like, oh. That's because he's got a good life. That's it. How it should be. Every dog should be that happy. I know. <laughs> Bless him. So are you going to be competing anywhere this year? Yes, so I'm doing the Bolton, is it Bolton? The Great British Groom, Groom Great British Grooming Show, is it? Bolton or think... Boston, I know it begins with a B. Yeah, so I'm doing that, that's the end of this month. Um, And I thought, you know, while I'm there, let's do another breed of dog, because, you know, that's how I, I roll. <laughs> yeah. It's not another so man like... No, no, no. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm borrowing a miniature schnauzer. Oh, nice. I love doing the mini schnauzers. Yeah, so um, I just thought it'd be different. And that's what I'm like. I'm like, if I'm going to a show, I might as well do something else as well, because, you know, I'm there. Yeah, you've got to do the morning and the afternoon class. Well, this, yeah, this is it. So, And I feel like if I'm travelling to Bolton, it's like four hours. I'm like, well, I might as well make it worth it. So, so yeah, I've got my black cocker that I'm going to take as well. And then this miniature schnauzer that I've never met yet. That's just the sort of thing I used to do. Walk <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> up on the day, yeah. like, where's my dog? Yeah, this is it. Why not, eh? Why not? It's a quick I little, let's that's... get to know you. Yeah, I find it's the way I learn, though, as well. That's the thing. And how I can I, be better. It's a brilliant, brilliant yeah. way of learning. Best way of learning, in my opinion. That, yeah. I mean, I've got two hours with a dog and then I can go, I like that bit, I don't like that bit, or, you know, I, I can actually groom. <laughs> and all of us, doesn't matter how well you do, there's always something you think, oh, don't look at that bit. Yeah, yeah. Always. You think, don't look at it that is. bit, look at the rest of it. Or you take a picture, you go, oh, it looks better actually in real life than in the picture <laughs> oh pictures are the worst though aren't they yeah you take a photo of the dog that you're really proud of and then you can find all the you think 
that wasn't like that. I swear that wasn't like that. Now I can't post this picture because there's a bit hanging out or whatever. You think that wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> they, do, they do a way of moving or something that makes things stick out just, just for a photo. Yeah, I know. And if you go there with the, with the comb and, and touch it up, they'll move again. You just know it. <laughs> That's what makes social media so hard when you're posting photos of your dogs. Getting them perfect, never going to happen. But yeah, no, this is it. This is why I don't post a lot on like Instagram or anything because I'm literally like, oh, you know, like, I'm not. But TikTok's I like it. amazing. Uh, so, yeah, are you on TikTok? I am, but I'm not very good at this kind of thing. But I did just watch the TikTok that you made with the cha cha slide. <laughs> yeah, it might be this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so oh, I did what? Yeah, oh, you've got you've got a duet that with Louie. <laughs> what the oh, yeah. love it. Yeah, love do it. it tomorrow. Duet <laughs> me with Louie doing that one. I'd love that. <laughs> That'll probably be one of my first TikToks I'll make, but I'll, I'll try and do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's got to be done. Absolutely got to be done. That'd be really oh, funny. Div, what are we gonna do? We can do some dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Slide to the left. You can practice right now. Slide <laughs> to the right. Oh, that's a cha cha cha. <laughs> oh, yeah, dear. you got to do that tomorrow. You've got, you've got to do it, yeah. mate. Look, here we are. What we can do? Louis. <laughs> Bless him. He's big snush. Does he always do that? Just rest his head on Yeah, his... it's annoying. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's adorable. It's not. It's annoying. He is like constantly like on me. The other the other two, they've got they've gone, they're like, oh, not interested. There was a reason I've got to sit up to this table and not on my sofa, because on the sofa, I they're all on me. I'll have the cat, the two chihuahuas, and Amber. <laughs> and then I can't move or operate anything. So I've got to sit up to the table because it's the only way they can't get on me. <laughs> Unless the cat gate crashes, but at the moment. Have you got a nice cat? Oh, he's gorgeous. Oh, mine's evil. No, mine's mine's just total utter love bug. I want a love bug cat. Then get a sphinx. Is that what you've got? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, want, I want one of them. Are they Berman? Berman cats. I think that, oh my god, they're beautiful looking. Berman Big or blue eyes and quite small, very fluffy, silver. They're beautiful. See, so there you go for looks and not personality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably end up being a cow as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if you want a good looking cat with a great personality, a Tonkinese. What's that? I don't know what that is. They are a second generation cross between a Siamese and a Burmese. Oh, okay, right. And they're really soppy, loving, gorgeous cats. So look them up, the Tonkinese. I used to have yeah. a Tonkinese. Oh. Only one yeah. word of caution, when they are kittens, they will chew up every shoelace, every cable, <laughs> every charging link <laughs> that you have. They are absolutely worse than any puppy you ever had. Oh, dear. These ruined handbags. Oh. Yeah, and it's a well-known trait of the Tonkinese kitten. That's so weird. weird. So I didn't funny. know that until after I had one. That, yeah, I bet. Yeah. That first. My Radley handbags have all got teeth marks in. Well, when I first got Div, he was like nine months old and he chewed two electric toothbrushes, my mum's designer shoes. Oh, God. It was like, but he was more than nine months. He was about, he was actually over a year. And I was like, why have we got this full grown like puppy that chews electric toothbrushes? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. It's expensive, doesn't it? I know. And then you've got to hope they don't swallow anything and then you end up with a vet bill as well. Hey. Bless him. Does he, how does he get on with you? Because he was an only child, wasn't he? And then you had well, your son. Well, and Lola. So, so, so the, like the history of my dogs. So we've got Freddie. He's a Yorkie Jack Russell. And uh, he's now 13. <laughs> so I had Freddie first. And then I moved out, so then I got Lola. And then um, then we split up. So then I moved back home uh, to my mum's and um, brought two dogs with me. 
Then I met Louis. Uh, I met Louis at Mike Waldman's because I used him for that. That's where I learned to hand strip um, was from Mike. And that's where I met Louis. And I stripped him and loved him. And Mike was the one that said to me, you should use him in a competition. And I went, really? You like, you think I could do that? And he was like, yes, like, you, you could do it. He looked lovely. So then I was like, so I kept in touch with his breeder because it was one of Mike's friends. And then I borrowed him for a competition and then he never went back. No. <laughs> so he's, he stayed. <laughs> That's how it should be. When it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And he stayed. And he's really annoying, but I wouldn't get rid of him <laughs> or, you know, he, like, I, he's good. I don't walk him on a lead. He's always by my side, but he is annoying. He's always there. <laughs> always are and they're the ones that take up so much of your life yeah and they mean so much more for that yeah yeah my amber's currently at my feet bless her yeah i mean I, I wasn't planning on being in her home until i went to visit sue and then that's good yeah. she was in the back of the car <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it kind of happens weren't it like it's I always said, that way though the, yeah. the best dogs come to you that way and, and my two hours luna and tori well they were clients yeah and then they came home well yeah my, my son I, was I, so never, happy. I never thought louis would ever stay but here he is and i've had him for like seven years eight years now so but it was really nice because i met him and i gave him his first ever hand strip at nine months and we kept in contact as well and yeah here he is he's taught me a lot though i learned that like, i took him to ring craft because i wanted to learn how to like sh like stack him and show him properly and if it so i took him to ring craft and we we did a couple of little shows just because i wanted to see what it was like with him and i at least had a decent enough dog to do it with so but yeah i'm very grateful like for him and like because he, he's taught me a lot as well he comes to work and you make all the puppies welcome, don't you? Because you love to play with them. That's he the goes best mad thing about having things. a dog in the salon that's so used to it, and so that they're really good at making nervous dogs calm. Yeah, yeah. He he doesn't bark. Louis doesn't bark. Like he's really calm. I mean, the only time he barks if he's like really playing, and he'll bark. But he do he doesn't like scare the dogs, or he he's not in their face. You know, if they want to come up to him, then he'll play. But yeah, he's um he is he loves coming to work. That's he gets it's so excited to see the girls. Yeah. They, they get, get so much stimulation, don't they, and enjoyment from that environment. Yeah, but now I've made like I now take him everywhere I go. So now I can't ever really leave him alone. I do, but he doesn't. You've made love a rod it. for your own back. Yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. You spoil I mean, that dog. He he's good because obviously I've got my other two, and he does stay at home with them. But you can tell that he's really cheesed off that I leave him with them. <laughs> so how are you finding all of this now that you're a mum to a two-legged uh, mammal? Uh, oh. Hard work. <laughs> Everything's hard work. <laughs> I don't know. Some days I go to work for a break as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the from the constant chatter. Yes. Because he's I, three now, isn't he? Yeah. I this morning I was um I went, come on, Brody, you're gonna go to Nanny's. And he went, I don't want to go to Nanny's. I was like, well, tough, you know, you are. He's like, no, I want to go to work. I'm like, Sure, you go to work then and I'll go to Nan's and I'll be looked after and you can work. And then we got into the van and he went, I will drive. And I was like, sure, okay. Brody, you can drive if you want. <laughs> but um, it's great. And I, I love like, I feel like I work too much, but it's, it's hard to find the right kind of balance with working and looking after him but you know it works he go he goes to nursery and he sees the nans as well so and then we have great fun at the weekends so that's how it should be yeah i think as working mums we get we get it tough because we're always ridden with guilt yeah whatever we do but you can't i can't i mean i i had a little time off with him but it's not like now i don't think you can really have time off because we don't get paid if we don't work do yeah. we that's the thing 
so, yeah and the thing is I want to I want to work to have money so then I can spoil him and go on holiday and do these things but yeah it is like what do you do yeah yeah you're between a rock and a hard place constantly yeah yeah and that just doesn't get easier no uh, I think I think we're okay we're man we're managing you know like I say, like you, do, you do feel bad, but, you know, he loves going to nursery and he loves the other kids. Brody's quite chilled as well, so, you know, he doesn't really care what he's up to. That's the thing. And we still get home and have playtime in the evenings and bed and stuff, so, you know, just one of them things, especially now times are now you have to kind of have to work. Yeah, or well, very much so. It's, if you, it's always a toss-up, isn't it, between giving your kids your time and being because it's it's hard you can't or even when there is time sometimes you've got to have the energy mm. and you've got to have the willpower to say yeah okay let's sit down together and, and draw this flip book when in the back of your head you're thinking i've got so much stuff to do yeah but you've got to make that time and find the energy and the effort to be enthusiastic yeah about it as well and I've, I've got to be honest, I have never, ever been enthusiastic about children's television. <laughs> you can leave well, in SpongeBob SquarePants. In yeah, the yeah, that is weird. My son still loves it. It's so weird. <laughs> and camped in underpants. Who comes so, up with these things? See, Brody watches this Netflix program and it's called Jurassic World and it's a cartoon Jurassic Park. Yeah. And he's well into dinosaurs. And the other day, I didn't even realise I was still watching it and he wasn't even in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really into this as well because it was quite good. So, <laughs> yeah. But he's now watched bl this thing called Blippy. Oh my God, that man's annoying. Blippy is annoying. <laughs> it was Mr. Tumble. When my son yeah. was younger. Oh, no, I could not stand that man's voice. <laughs> or anything to do with it. And it was on every morning. Oh, Kill me now. <laughs> and he loved it. Do they still have Mr. Tumble now? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. CBeebies, I think. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So is there anything else you're doing this year that we need to be talking about? Um, no, just just these seminars that we, we're doing as well. So looking forward to doing them and just hopefully like we're going to do seminars and workshops together. Because I said uh, my way of teaching is like, bring me your dog, show me how you'll groom it and I'll either change it or help you achieve how you want to get. I don't think I'm very good at explaining what I'm doing. This is why I got Julie to help me with the handout. Because I, d I was like, am I saying it right? Am I writing it down right? I'd rather go to him, oh, stop right there. If you do it like this, you could achieve it and it will look better. So that's, and that, yeah, that's how I But like I think teach. that's a, a really practical way of, of teaching as well, because every dog is different. They've all got their, yeah. their different coats, different structures. And so watching somebody do their dog, which may or may not be perfect, and the way they make that dog look great. And then you've got your own dog and you're like, actually mine doesn't come out quite like that so having somebody yeah. show you on your dog what you can change to make it look grand I think it is a great way for it especially for anyone who's considering competing yeah I especially with cockers because I do find that different colors it is different like I don't Coats really are vastly like, different yeah I don't particularly love stripping a blue roan obviously I can do it but I find it much tougher. I prefer like a solid, like a black or a gold. But then as well, now you're getting sables and it's just like, you're throwing it all in as well. But uh, yeah, to, um, so that's what I can, uh, that's why I like showing people how you can do it on different ones as well. I just find blue roans, their hair just is a bit different. It doesn't strip like, I think it's because they've got the white in it as well. It's just like the black seems to come and the white seems to stay forever. Oh, it's like with, with Springer Spaniels as well, when you've got those whites and, and the, yeah. the, the solid brown or whatever, and then they strip differently. And the, the markings will make a dog look different. So how you yeah. manage and control those patches of colour would be different according to each dog. With... I hate hand stripping anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Give 
Give me a scissored wool coat any day or schnauzer. That's yeah. the six, but even then I'd buy the clipper schnauzer. <laughs> Sacrilegious, I know. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I don't mind. It just depends if people are regular to come and have it done. That's the thing. I'm not going to do it like six seven months worth of hair every time you know that's the thing and you've got to charge enough for it as well this is it yeah definitely and people have got to be willing to pay for it well yeah that's that yeah definitely definitely now you've had your eyelashes done do you Just like them i love them i can't live with eyelashes like that do you not i i tried really hard for a little while ago but where i wear glasses Oh, they, kept, yeah. they kept knocking on the glass and then getting stuck down and then I'd try and look up and my, my eyelash would be stuck on the glass lens so I'd be yeah, the whole time trying to look up it's awful yeah no I do love it I do feel like a bit more pretty than I just stuck in dog hair I loved <laughs> the way it looked I absolutely loved it and I did find myself fluttering my yeah. eyelashes but living with it just and I was forever doing that to make sure they were okay. And oh, I can't bother with it's only one of my really good customers. She brings her bulldogs, and then I do her bulldogs, and she does my eyelashes. So that's kind of, yeah, it's kind of what we do now. How often do you get them done? Every two weeks. You got to to keep them looking good, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So and you got yeah, perfect great. eyebrows as well. Well, she works them as well for me today, but I actually had them tattooed um, a little while ago. So, yeah. My mum had hers tattooed. I like it. I like it. I've got a shape to follow, like when I do pluck my own brows, but she did wax them for me today, just tonight as well. I just, just have a fringe. No one can yeah, see so, mine. Yeah, it's easy. a bit, bit, lot easier, is it? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot easier. No worries, no issues. <laughs> and I'm a no makeup, no nothing kind of girl nowadays. Oh yeah, I, t I tell you, I don't really wear makeup that often. So obviously, I got my tattooed, and then I just got my eyelashes, and that and that's why because I'm kind of the person that rolls out of bed and goes to work. So at least I don't really actually have to do anything because this is how I, I do <laughs> quite fancy getting eyeliner tattooed and getting yeah. lip tattooed. Oh, I don't know if I could do lips. I think I'd be like, could stuff it's really itchy. Yeah. My, my, like my, cousin, my cousin does it. Oh, okay. She's got a place in Kent. Um, yeah. And she does a fantastic job. And she has said she would do them for me. And she was going to do it for me before lockdown. And we'd arrange yeah. a date for me to come down to Kent and, and you know, my boy could play with her boys. And she was going to yeah, do yeah. that for me. And then, of course, we had to cancel and we just, never got round to it again two years I've, ago. I've had eyeliner tattooed and did it last yeah it does yeah it does but it bloody hurts i'm not even gonna lie my eyes were swollen the next day it, it, it i had to take paracetamol i had to take paracetamol so much my eyes were so swollen i wanted matchsticks to prop my eyes i don't think it hurt that much i've had it done three times though but you know over the years but I'm not gonna. I said. I said after this one. I said I'm not gonna have it done again. It. It just. It hurts. And I've had yeah. a child. <laughs> yeah. So there is something weird about a tattoo. I always think it feels like a cigarette burn. So the thought the thing, of that on the eye yeah. is a little bit horrifying. It's just the thing is, is once you start, you can't be like you stop now. That's the thing. So you just have to sit there. And just like uh, I still got my eyes like tattooed. Oh. And like my when she did my bottom one, my eyes were like half open, so I could see this needle. And I'm like, oh my god. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got watery eyes anyway, so oh, oh yeah. Head. Mine were flinching and like watering. I was like, I don't know how she is doing this. <laughs> no, I don't know how my lash lady used to do my lashes. Because there's there's no way, even though you the, the, the tissue and these yeah I, I couldn't not move my eyes underneath no. my eyelids and she was always saying keep your eyes still and I thought I was yeah this is it this is what my lash lady says to me she goes you're blinking I'm like am I how can I blink my eyes are shut yeah <laughs> oh look hello 
Oh, look. Call him Jumper on. They did not feel the cold. All three of my dogs really feel the car. I can feel your tail wagging. <laughs> oh, say hello. Who's this one? This one is Luna. I have to check these. Mm. Oh, Luna's bless. sister, very similar. Oh. How long have you had them? Two years now. Oh. They're getting on a bit. They're nine. Oh, bless them. No, they're going to live forever. They're going to yeah. be like... 19. <laughs> Let's hope so. Or or not. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Tamari, you've got to do the cha 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 with Nuri. And That's it, we are. with Luna, who's doing it, and Tori and Amber. Because that would be really <laughs> cute. Slide to the left. Crisscross. <laughs> yeah, yeah let me start with that. Did you see that thing on TikTok a little while ago? Uh, the Halloween special, you know, where they're like, ride the witch's broom. The, the, uh, oh, the workout. They were all doing it. No, like, but oh. I've only joined TikTok in the last month. Just Oh, God, you need, oh, you needed to see it at Halloween. Me and Louie did that at work. And one of the girls filmed it because she was like, because we were riding the witch's broom. And we were, oh, God, yeah. Okay, you need to do more. So it, so they're like kick Satan, kick him in the crotch, or like no squash Satan, kick him in the crotch. And I was doing yeah because it was like a little workout video, but Halloween and oh, I'm just rambling on really. <laughs> <laughs> As you do TikTok, yeah. yeah, you can spend hours of your life wasting time on there though. Lisa, I think I got TikTok during lockdown, and I think I was just like watching it for ages. I, hey, I didn't. I resisted, and I saw everyone else was doing TikTok. I thought, oh no, you know what? I'm too old. Just, just yeah. no, 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 I'll leave it for the youngsters. And then for the for this whole thing, I've had to embrace the TikTokness, and embrace it. I have, and it's fab. It is. You do. Uh, you do waste hours on it as well. It's just yeah. Easy. I was in the bath earlier. And just scrolling through because I'm always looking for ideas of what my next TikTok should be in the salon. And I looked up and it was, I'd been in the bath for an hour and a half. I was like, I've got to get out and cook dinner now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I've been in for an hour and a half and I haven't even noticed because I've been looking at TikTok. I know, I know. I do it in the evenings. So I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go to bed in a minute. And then literally it's like fatal. 11, 11 o'clock. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> oh, is that a toe? Yeah, that's my foot, yes. <laughs> What's it doing up there? Just sitting like a weirdo. You just <laughs> I was like, hang on, why is there a foot next to your head? <laughs> okay, that is weird. I, just, so... I couldn't get my foot up there. No way. I was like, I was like just <laughs> You are a weirdo. There's no way my foot could go there. Is that because well, you? I am, I am small. It's not like I've got far to go. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot. Actually, to be fair. Can we cut this out? The whole toe situation. It's hanging. I'm just like, I'm sitting here talking to me, mate, aren't I? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should stop drinking, right? No, you carry on, love. I was <laughs> 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 thinking, is that? Is that a toe? I'm like, yes, he is. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm so I don't think he was anyway. You just make them leak even worse. <laughs> Oh dear. I was On like, yes, I'll stop, being, I was like, I'll stop being weird now. No, never stop being weird. Never stop being you because it's funny. And yeah, that is so staying in. <laughs> we need to name that toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I feel like such a moron. <laughs> it's great. It's lovely. You, you know, you're just chilling. You're just chilling on the sofa, just chatting about the right, stuff. And... At least you're relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> and it has been absolutely lovely chatting to and you it, and your toe this evening. 
Thanks. <laughs> and hopefully everyone who is, is watching and listening to this is, is really loved hearing and seeing you as well. And of course, anyone who wants to see more of Hannah and her big toe can join <laughs> us on the tune. <laughs> It's not my toe, it's the <laughs> Cocker Spaniel's toe, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to do a demo on my toe. <laughs> I, think, I think your toe needs to make a special appearance. Uh, so yeah, English Groomers Challenge on the 5th of June, be there or be square, because Hannah will be there demonstrating heads and toes on <laughs> Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining us Hannah thanks thanks for having me it's nice to see you <laughs> and thanks to your toe for joining us as well anytime <laughs> <laughs>